We begin with this morning's failed attempt to launch the first private spacecraft to the International Space Station. It happened before dawn at the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida as the countdown reached zero. Three, two, one, zero, and liftoff. We've had a cutoff. Liftoff did not occur. Even the announcer was surprised. The Falcon 9 rocket built by Space Exploration Technologies, or SpaceX, never got off the pad. It's a setback for NASA's plan to have private companies take over much of what's been an exclusively government enterprise. And joining us now from the Kennedy Space Center is CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood. Good morning to you, Bill. Hey, good morning. So how many people there are saying this morning you get what you pay for? Well, you know, that occurs to people whenever they think about this commercial endeavor, but that's really not the case here. You know, I think they accurately stated this this morning. The mistake would have been if they had launched with an engine problem. They didn't. The software caught the problem before takeoff. They aborted the thing, and they'll fix it and try again. So I think in that sense, it all worked as it's supposed to. And, you know, rockets are complicated things. We always joke about things that are rocket science, and in this case, it really is. Uh, they'll get it right, and they'll make another try at it. That's a good point. Their next try comes on Tuesday, as I understand it. What are the chances they solve this problem by then? Well, they don't really know what caused it. Uh, they got down to 0.5 seconds before the clamps would have released the rocket to go. One of the nine engines in the first stage, the center engine, had a high pressure in its, cha in its combustion chamber, and that's what triggered the abort. It's not yet clear if they're going to have to actually make a repair, maybe even replace the engine. They think they can make repairs in time for a Tuesday launch attempt, but right now that's TBD. they got to get in there and take a look before they can figure out exactly what went wrong. When NASA started this program, they ran into some problems as well. As well, it wasn't completely smooth from the start. How many more tries does SpaceX get before someone says enough is enough? Oh, I think they'll get as many tries as they want. You know, NASA has spent about $400 million on the test program. That's an earlier flight in 2010 and to get to this point. And of course, SpaceX has a $1.6 billion contract to send 12 of these capsules up to the space station to keep it supplied. You know, when NASA retired the space shuttle, they lost the ability to carry up all those tons of supplies and equipment that the station needs to operate. They really need the SpaceX capsule to work. And of course, there's also another company, Orbital Sciences, is building a commercial cargo ship as well. NASA's funding two different programs here uh, to be able to make sure they can get supplies to the station. So I think SpaceX is going to get all the time they need. Mm -hmm. These kind of problems happen from time to time with rockets, and uh, I'm pretty sure they'll resolve this one. And, and you bring up an interesting point here because SpaceX is going to be fulfilling a need for cargo at the space station that foreign enterprises, foreign companies could also fill and have been fulfilling. How much longer is it before they need a, 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 a more supplies there and then would have to call on a foreign source again to do this? Well, right now there's Russian Progress Supply Ships, the European Space Agency has a cargo ship, and so does the Japanese Space Agency. Uh, you know, with the very last space shuttle mission that NASA launched last year, they really left the station with really, really they're flush with supplies and equipment. There's not an immediate pressing need to get these commercial ships up and running. I think if they didn't have it happening by the end of this year, then they'd have to start trying to think of some alternatives. But they've got months and months here to deal with this to get this program up and running before they would really run into a crunch on the station supply-wise. Yeah, and if they're going to do this every three days, if it fails and go back to the drawing board every three days, they'll have a number of options before then. Bill Harwood, thanks so much. Great reporting.